Africa is a land of giants. Recently rescued from the brink of extinction, the southern white rhino sports one of the largest horns in the animal kingdom. When it comes to defending territory, rhinos usually just push and shove. Serious injuries are rare. But when there's a female to fight for, things can get savage. We came around a very wide bend, and there, right before our eyes, were these two rhino absolutely locked in battle. Tracy and Chris Jacobs were on holiday in Etosha National Park, Namibia, when they found they were centre stage for a clash of the titans. It was instant excitement. Chris just slammed on brakes. He didn't want to go another inch further forward because they were clearly very aggressive and he was afraid they were going to ram the vehicle. And I was shouting him, never mind the vehicle, I just go forward, I've got to get this footage. So half hanging out the window, we inched forward until eventually we were as close as we did. One of the rhinos has an extraordinarily long horn, but its size seems to hamper him, not help. The shorter-horned challenger definitely has the edge. The one appeared to be stronger and fitter than the other one, and far more aggressive. The weaker of the two would keep turning around and trying to run away, and the more aggressive rhino would run up behind him and literally lift him right off the ground with his horn. It's amazing to think that he was lifting up 3,000 kilograms, and he did it so easily. That's three tons, the weight of a large SUV, on the tip of a horn made of keratin, the same substance as our fingernails. The rear end of the victim was very punctured and, and bleeding from the amount of time it had been rammed. Extreme aggression like this is rare in rhinos, and is almost always caused by the presence of a female ready to mate. Usually, rhino fights end when an opponent retreats, but the shorthorn challenger wants to make sure victory is his. Sadly, in this case, surrender isn't an option. It was terribly sad. It was a very sad thing to see, but at the same time, also very exciting, because you know you're getting footage that is very rarely seen. Defending a territory ensures access to food and mates, the driving forces of survival in the wild. When it comes to territorial disputes between Africa's most powerful predators, the struggles can be fearsome. In the depths of the Kruger National Park, Gordon Dyer was on holiday when he captured a scene professional cameramen could wait a lifetime to film. Africa's largest predator turning on its own. We came across two male lions, and they seemed very perturbed. We were following them, and I looked in my rear view mirror, and I thought, what's this? I'm seeing double or something. I saw four huge black maned lions, and they made chase of these two lions. Two brothers caught on the run. Whilst one makes good his escape, his sibling is surrounded and in big trouble. It felt like the car was vibrating from this roar. You, you could actually feel it in, in your gut. With that roar, I was going to sit there, boy. I was not moving nowhere. It sounded like they were trying to get a message to these two blokes. Ah, you, 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 you're getting in our way. Get out of here. It is so intense, it is actually frightening. See that deep, intense roar that it is hitting you in the chest. But what drives such a savage attack? Behaviorist Kevin Richardson has spent the past decade working with large predators. He believes that this conflict is a turf war. It's two old males coming to the end of their reign and four young males who are quite a tightly bonded coalition of either brothers or cousins saying, hey, 
It's time for us to take on a new territory. It's time for us to take over your pride. And if you don't want to get out of here, we might just kill you. The four of them really circle this old male, each taking their turn to show him that they are younger, they're fitter, they're stronger. He's very submissive. He turns his backside in. He tries to protect his hindquarters, and he certainly doesn't want them to get anywhere near his throat. As vicious as it seems, this fierce competition is the way lions get rid of weaker animals and keep their population fit and strong. Uh, when it was finished, I put the camera down and we just sat there, took a, a deep breath to realize we were in nature. I was born in Africa. I've lived in Africa all my life. I've been going up the Kruger Park for 30 years. It, it was just one of those things which I don't think I'll ever see again in my life. For some species, territorial disputes are not resolved only in head-to-head -head clashes between warring males. Some seem even more barbaric and deeply tragic. A zebra herd is ruled by a single stallion that possessively guards his harem of females and foals. He will protect his herd and his genes at all costs, however brutal. Jenny Pappas was on safari in Etosha when she came across a zebra stallion showing unusually ferocious behavior. As we were making our way up, we stopped at one of the water holes where there were a herd of zebra. I was looking through my binoculars. The next thing, the stallion took this little foal and I was so engrossed in it, I just kept on looking through my binoculars and my partner Graham shouted at me, get the camera, get the camera. The stallion attacked this foal. It was horrific. He was throwing him around. Uh, he had him by his leg. Oh, he was horrible. He was jumping on him and he threw him in the water. I couldn't believe what he was actually doing. It was really terrible. The mother, in all her efforts, tried to save the, the baby and she was kicking him and biting him and he just wouldn't let go. He just would not let go. He obviously wanted to get rid of that foal. When the mare joined the herd, she must have already been pregnant with another stallion's foal. I didn't realize that zebras were so vicious. I found out since that the stallion's instinct is for his gene to be the one to continue down the line. He's not going to accept another male's gene in his herd. Eventually, he did leave the foal. The herd left the waterhole and the mother stayed behind and they were communicating with each other. You could hear them in the distance um, neighing and she would answer them back as to say, I'm not going, I'm staying here. I need to look after my baby. The next morning early, the foal was still there. It obviously had died in the night. We couldn't understand it because there were hyena all over. When they drove further into the park, they discovered the grim reason why the foal's body had been left alone we saw that the hyenas had actually attacked the mom. Although you're watching it, you're feeling sad, you know it's nature and nature looks after its own. It is a cruel act, what we as humans think is cruel, but an animal doesn't know cruelty. Nature is phenomenal. You know, the natural instinct that a mother has to save her young, even to her death. <laughs>